so far in the course for most part we have been discussing about circuits digital circuits which take certain inputs and uh, give some output or outputs plural so let us say uh, we have a system which can be represented in this form using this diagram where let us say it has one output y and some number of inputs let us say 3 or 4 or whatever let's say it has four inputs So what we have seen is uh, that the y is some function of a, b, c and d which are the inputs to the system. In general a system may have more than one output but without the loss of generality we can consider this simple system. So what we see, what we have seen is that the output y can be any function of these four variables, this can be represented in soft form, post form or any general form where ultimately what we see is that this function consists of logical operations on these variables one with the other. You can have complements, you can have anding, you can have oring, so on and so forth. But the bottom line is that the output is some combination of A, B, C and D. So therefore such kind of circuits are called as combinational logic circuits. Where the output depends on some combination of the input. Another way to look at it is if you construct a truth table, you have inputs versus outputs, the value of y depends on what the value of ABCD is. So ABCD can take 16 possible combinations. So therefore the combination of ABC and D decides what y is. That is another reason why it's called as a combinational logic circuit. Now, one thing that was so far implicit in our discussion was that y depends only on the values of a, b, c and d and nothing else. Supposing we were to now introduce the variation of y as a function of time. So does y change with time? Well, what does y depend on? y depends on a, b, c and d. So, if a, b, c and d change, y will change. Otherwise, if I keep the values of a, b, c and d fixed, y will remain fixed for all eternity. So if I say, if a, b, c, d change with time, So does y. If a, b, c, d are fixed with time, then y is also fixed. Right? So, supposing I a, B, C and D is 0, 1, 1, 0 and Y is supposed to be 1. So if I keep the system in such a way that the 
values of a b c and d are always 0 1 1 0 no matter how much time passes 1 second 10 second 10 minutes 1 hour a week or even a year y will continue to be y so therefore the most important thing to note about combinational logic circuits is that they depend primarily on the input. The notion of time is missing. The notion of time is missing. Furthermore, there is no correlation between multiple combinations of the inputs. So one combination of the inputs decides the output. So whatever is the values of A, B, C and D, only that will decide why, nothing else. Is it possible for circuits to give different outputs for the same combination? Now this question might seem very strange. The question that I asked was, can circuits give different outputs? at different points of time for the same values of the input or the same combination of the input. Well, there, there is a possibility, we, we don't know, maybe it could. So in that case, however, the question that I asked is trying to convey some deeper meaning. And the meaning that it's trying to convey is that if a circuit can give different outputs for the same input combinations, obviously there is some other variable also. I cannot now say that y will be only a function of a, b, c and d. The time concept also is coming. So, if I take a combinational logic circuit and I introduce the concept of time, then that circuit is called as a sequential circuit. Because these circuits may tend to depend on the sequence, sequence of events. Now what does the sequence of events mean? It's not very important at this point of time. This is what we shall try to decipher in the coming few lectures. So the point to, to draw from our discussion so far is that the concept of time could perhaps convert a combinational logic circuit into something different. It may cause a combinational circuit to give different outputs for the same input combinations. Now when I say time, when I say I am introducing the concept of time, what that means, what that means is The, I mean, when you talk of time, there can be multiple things. You can have values that have already happened in the past, the values that are currently coming to the system that is the present. You can also have the values which are expected to come in the future. So the concept of present, past and future tenses is also coming in. So obviously, so obviously, such circuits where 
we may have to deal with values that have already happened values that may come in the future in some sense we need to keep track of the things which have already happened so the concept of memory is also coming now when i say memory i don't necessarily mean the memory associated with the computer like ram or rom memory can be anything any any, any system that has knowledge of its past inputs or past outputs whatever the case may be now before we before we jump into the discussion about what this memory is all about let us first ask ourselves is it worth discussing all this are there circuits or are there systems around us which rely on this concept of past or future something like that well in fact there are many such applications there are many such applications one of the major applications where this memory is sort of used is a biometric attendance device this device is often used in various offices where let us say the input to the system is somebody's fingerprint and the machine has to track whether it's a valid fingerprint and how many people have given the attendance so far so let us first have a simple problem let us say that all this machine has to do is count the number of fingerprints so let us say we expect that the employees will arrive in the office the employees will arrive in the office around 9 o'clock in the morning so before 9 for that day the attendance would be zero now let us say the first employee walks in and that person puts the fingerprint so therefore what should happen this zero will become one that means yes one person has come now when the next person comes this one should become two but in reality what is happening until the time the next person comes the output stays at one that part is okay what this circuit also has to do is that it has to remember that all one person has already given the attendance and therefore i should not override that or i should take that into account and i should increment it by one so if it is a binary value i can have let us say 0000 i can have 0001 then 0010 something like that there could be more number of bits also so it's like saying at different points of time for the same input the output is kind of different for the timing you can consider a valid fingerprint being treated as you know identical although fingerprints for people are different they are unique for the sake of discussion over here we can consider that two or more people giving their fingerprint input corresponds to identical inputs so what we are saying is that the outputs are sort of different when the same input is being given but over a period of time so this is how a biometric attendance works 
Similarly, similarly, another place where you may have seen this thing, this concept being applied is in digital watches. Digital watches or stopwatch. So initially, let us say you are trying to uh, time an athlete who is competing in a 100 meters race. So when, when uh, at, the, at the time before the athlete takes uh, starts running, the, the watch sort of looks like this, 0000. zero, zero, zero. And with the passing of every second, the second hand sort of increments by one and let us say you are able to complete the 100 meter uh, run in 15 seconds then after that when I stop it might look something like this. So the point is that with the passing of every second, with the passing of every second the watch sort of adds a plus one to it. So that's how that's just a very superficial way of giving this example. Now coming back to the first system that we discussed which is the biometric attendance machine. You can consider that the finger pressed would correspond to a 1 and not pressed would correspond to a 0. So again the question is how would the system remember that yes one person has already come before it proceeds to counting to it should remember that two people have already registered before it goes to three now this can happen only if there is some kind of a feedback mechanism where part of the output is fed back to the input so let us say when we are talking about this feedback mechanism suppose I have some logic circuit So you can have some kind of conventional input, let us say A, B, C, D. And let us say you have one output that is Y. You can take a part of it and give it as feedback to the input. This is what I mean by a feedback mechanism. So therefore, this might look very strange to you. Making a, a connection like this might look very strange to you. So what we do is that to determine what will be the future value of y, we consider the inputs which are like a normal logic inputs and the present value of y. So current values of a, b, c and d and the current value of y, this determine the future value of y. So in some sense we can say that we are predicting the future. But it's not really predicting if you really know how the system would behave. And that is precisely what we will do. We will not predict the future through guesswork. We will actually predict the future through proper understanding and logical approach. So now let us see 
how we can realize something as simple as a feedback or something that looks rather simple but actually is not how we can realize this using the gates that we already know so therefore let's suppose i start with something very simple i have a not gate now let me just play around and take its output and connect it back to its input i connect it back to its input all right now you may say that this makes absolutely no sense where is the input well in that case you will see that a not get can have at most one input so therefore whatever is the output that is the input there is absolutely no way to give any other input so the question is how would the circuit behave i am not forcibly giving any input to it whatever is the output that is the input so in such cases in such cases the working of the circuit will depend on the conditions around it so normally for most of our discussions so far in the course we have happily assumed that whatever gates we work with they are ideal gates and they'll always give us the desired output so long as we have designed them properly but but in reality if i have a circuit that is lying in the lab and that is connected in this fashion as shown here its operation will depend on the ambient noise that means the noise signals around it so noise is any unwanted signal it sort of it might be strong enough to drive let us say the output to one it's possible so when this one goes back over here one will become a zero then this zero will again go back and it will again become a one so you will actually have a series of 1010101010 and so on. this will happen very very fast obviously it will depend on how much time this not gate takes to convert its input into the proper complement at the output so therefore if i say this gate has a time delay of td now we are familiar with the concept of time delay td having discussed fast adders in the last couple of lectures so what may happen is that when the input is 1 output will be 0 when the input is 0 output will be 1 so on and so forth so effectively if i were to draw the signal in this wire as a function of time it might look something like this where each high time and low time will correspond to td so while it's very interesting it's not giving us much what we are interested is in is actually having a circuit that can remember the value that can hold the value here it's not holding it's sort of constantly fluctuating so what i can do i can take one more not gate now i will feed this output back to the input of the first gate okay so let us say that the voltage over here we will call it as vx here we will call it as vy now again because of noise let us say this vy is zero now in that case this zero goes back over here and vx becomes a one and this one stays as zero now this is a stable circuit this does not change conversely if the initial condition made vy 
as 1, then this 1 will go back over here and Vx would become 0 and Vy would continue to be at 1. So therefore, this is a stable circuit. This is a stable value circuit. Why? Because Vy will always be Vx bar. This condition is always true and this is able to hold its value. In fact, this concept is used in many of the computer memories, say for example in static RAM or SRAM. So the point is, as long as I keep this circuit undisturbed, it will remember the values 0 and 1 at Vx and Vy or 1 and 0, whatever, for time immemorial. Forever in future, this will remember these logic values. So. So if you sort of redraw the circuit, what it will look like is this. If I take that circuit cons consisting of two NOT gates, if I take these two NOT gates, let us say I keep one over here and another over here. So the output of the first will go to the input of the next. And the output of the second gate will go as an input to the first gate. So if this let us say value is A, this will be A bar, this will also be A bar and this will be A. Now this kind of a structure is called as a butterfly structure. Because this connection sort of looks like the wings of a butterfly. But all that aside, what we are seeing is that while we are able to generate some values, logic values and store them for time immemorial or until we switch off the power, the bad thing is that we don't know what will be the value of A and A bar. It all depends on the noise, the noise around the circuit. A could be 1 in which case A bar would be 0, A could be 0 in which case A bar would be 1. So having said that, we realize that while we have achieved something interesting, but still we are leaving the values of A and A bar to chance and as engineers we cannot afford to leave anything to chance. So, therefore, so therefore, we must ask the next question. We have achieved something interesting. Now, if I'm drawing the circuit like this, it seems that there is some kind of a feedback. A is going over here, A bar is coming over here. So, the feedback concept is also shown over here. Now, can we decide the values of A and A bar not by chance, not by chance, but by giving external inputs? By giving any additional inputs, can we decide the values of A and A bar? That's a question we need to answer. But as you can see, there is, there is absolutely no way we can give any additional inputs because NOT gate can take only one input and give one output. So therefore, let us modify the structure a little bit. 
let us replace this not gets by the next best thing we can use a universal get either an nand get or a not get so let us use a nand get in a very very similar fashion nand get has two inputs each of them so therefore what we will do we will take one of the outputs over here and bring this back over here similarly we can also do this let's call these two inputs as a and b so if i try to correlate this diagram with the one above if i try to correlate this diagram with the one above what i will see is that in some sense this can still act like not gets given the proper values of a and b and ultimately what we would like to store is one value and its complement so therefore let us call this as q and q bar why i am saying this is because we expect that these outputs will be complements now nothing is guaranteeing this mind you nothing is guaranteeing that actually these should be complements but but we are now just being stubborn and saying that i simply want to take this not get butterfly structure into this circuit where i can have the luxury of giving additional inputs as well as try to achieve the operation where these two values will be complements of each other so this is something we are hoping for now now what you see is that this diagram looks very similar to the diagram which i had shown earlier there are some normal inputs and there is this feedback so here we see there are two feedback lines and two inputs so therefore i can say the future values of q and q bar will depend on the present values of q and q bar and also a and b so i will say future so let me not talk about q bar because when i am talking about q automatically q bar i hope will be its complement future q value will be a function of present q value and a and so therefore let us try to analyze this circuit let us try to analyze this circuit let us draw this diagram again now let me construct a truth table now what will the output be so i will call this as future q i will call this as future q okay and i will analyze accordingly so therefore let me fill this let us consider a case when a is 0 and b is 1 so when a is 0 and b is 1 what will happen when a is 
this NAND gate gets a zero. So automatically Q will become one. Now this one will come here. B is also one. I'm talking about this condition, zero and one. Q is one, B is one. So one, one, Q bar will be zero. So in this case, I'm getting Q and Q bar are complements. Let's consider one and zero. If A is one and B is zero. So if B is zero, automatically Q bar will become one. This one will go over here. One and one will give me a zero. So now Q will be zero. Q bar we got as one, Q is zero. Here also Q and Q bar are proper complements. Now let's talk about zero and zero. When A and B are both zero, what will happen? This gate will also become a one. This gate output will also become a one. So both Q and Q bar would be now one. So therefore, this is a case when A and B are both zero and Q and Q bar are both becoming one. That is the same. So what we are saying is that in this case, we are not getting the complements. We are not getting the complements. So therefore, this we will call as a forbidden state. It is forbidden because Q and Q bar are becoming equal. This is something that we don't want. Remember what we are trying to do? We are trying to replicate the NOT gate based butterfly structure in such a way that these two values will always be complements of each other. So, so therefore, let us now see what happens when A and B are both 1 and 1. So when A is 1 and B is 1, both gates get inputs of 1, but that's not enough. We need to know what the other input is, because if that other input is 1, then the output would be 0. If the other input is 0, the output would be 1. So we, know, we don't know anything about the other input. So therefore, best is we can assume it. So let's assume, so let's assume that Q is 1. This given A and B are 1. Let's assume Q is equal to 1. Okay. So in that case, 1 is coming over here. 1 and 1, the output will be 0. So Q bar is becoming 0. Now we need to cross verify. This 0 is going over here. 1 and 0, Q is 1. So that means the next Q will be 1 and Q bar or rather I should say next Q bar would be 0. Now the other case. Let's assume the current Q is 0. Again given A and B are 1. So when Q is 0, this 0 comes here, 1 and 0, Q bar becomes 1. Now 1 and 1 this Q bar comes over here, 1 and 1, Q becomes 0. So again, we see the next Q is 0 and the next Q bar is a 1. So therefore, whatever, as long as A and B are 1, whatever is the old Q, the same is the new Q. So therefore, the future Q in this case is the same as the present Q. Alright. So therefore, what do I mean by Q and future Q? This is nothing but the value of Q at a later point of time. And this future Q is indicated using Q with a superscript of plus. So therefore, this truth table would now become something like this. forbidden 1 0 and q so please note
नोट q प्लस इज नॉट एनीथिंग डिफरेंट q प्लस इज नॉट एनीथिंग डिफरेंट देर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड q प्लस इन दिस सर्किट q plus is same as q except that it's a value at a later point in time so here we have achieved a circuit where if we sort of give different input combinations let us say when we are giving different input combinations we can make the circuit behave in different ways let us say when ab is 0 1 or 1 0 the outputs would be in such a way or the future value of q is in such a way that it's almost like a combination circuit there is no concept of time whereas if you have inputs 1 and 1 whatever is the old value that will be there if the old value was 0 the new value will be 0 if the old value was 1 the new value would also be 1 so such kind of circuits where there is some concept of time we are able to make it work uh the way we want either combinational or sequential this kind of circuits are called as latches so we shall discuss more about latches not just the word from the look of it in the next lecture while in this particular lecture we started a discussion on circuits whose outputs could be different for the same input combinations as a function of time thereby we talked about the concept of what is called as sequential circuits we established that for this to work you need a feedback and we started looking at some circuits where you can have feedback although not everything about feedback and memory would be clear at this point of time we hope that in the next few lectures as we understand more about how feedback and latches and such things work we will be able to get a better understanding we shall continue from this point onwards in the next lecture thank you